In today's note, we are going to look at a summary of scatter plots and trend lines, um, with basically based on what we should have gathered from the um, investigation. So some general definitions that we are going to be using or going over as we talk about scatter plots. The first one is trend, and the trend is the general pattern that is found with the data, or found in the data. And it's typically described with the phrase, as the x variable increases, the y variable increases or decreases. So again, depending on what you're looking at, obviously you'd have the x variable and the y variable replaced with the actual um, variables that you're looking at. But you're basically describing how one affects the other. The strength of the relationship, that basically is telling us how close to fitting a straight line the data is. If it looks very close to a straight line, then we would call it a strong relationship. And then from there, we would go to weak or moderate um, to no relationship or no correlation. Correlation refers to um, kind of the general direction, right? So shape or relationships can have a positive or neg negative correlation, which can be strong, weak, or moderate. So again, how well does it fit a straight line. And there can also be scenarios where you have no correlation between the variables. So basically, a positive correlation is talking about as the x variables increase, the y variable also increases. Or it's basically going up and to the right. So it looks something similar to that. Negative correlation, as the x variable increases, the y variable decreases. So it would have something like this. So we've already talked about negative and positive slopes. This is the same idea, but with scatter plots. Some examples of different correlations and different strengths we can see here. So here we have a positive correlation that's strong, and you can see that it forms roughly a straight line. Strong negative correlation, again, same idea, but in the negative direction. Moderate. So we can still kind of see that general line shape, but it's not as tight as the previous one. Weak and positive. So again, we can still kind of see a general line shape, but they're not as clustered together. Same with the weak negative. We can kind of see, okay, they are trending downwards or in the negative direction, but again, they're not all close together. And then a no correlation. We can see, I can't really tell if this is positive or negative. Um, and I can't tell a trend at all. This is all what I was doing by drawing a kind of like a circle or a shape around the dots is a nice way to also kind of visualize is it a strong, moderate, weak or no correlation, right? The closer these shapes or these circles were to a straight line or a very thin oval, then the stronger the relationship, the closer to a square they were and kind of the weaker or no correlation there was. So that's something you can use um, if you want to kind of double check um, your correlation or your strength. Interpolation. Interpolation is the term used when we are estimating a value between two known values or within our data set. So interpolation is basically an estimation or a guess based on the values we know. And if I'm looking at any scatter plot, when I talk about within the data set, that means any value between my first and my last point. So anything included in there, any value between these two points is considered interpolation. Because the reason is, or the reason is, because I'm fairly confident I know what the trend is like based on the data that I have. Right? If you know what the numbers are, you know what certain values are around that, you should be able to be more um, confident with your estimation. Right? It doesn't have to be an exact value that you already have as long as it is between the first or the highest and lowest value. Extrapolation. Extrapolation is again to predict or estimate a value by following the pattern beyond the known values. So beyond what we know. So again, using this same example, my first and last point, that's what I know. 
anything with extrapolation is going to be focused past the data that I have. And the reason we're calling it a prediction rather than an estimation is because I'm less confident that I know what the trend is going to be like. Is it going to be the same thing? I don't know. Is it going to continue on with that same trend outside the data I have collected? Again, I don't know. Right. And a quick example might be like if I'm looking at age and height, starting out as a baby and then getting older, usually you might say that it's going to form a, pos a strong positive correlation. However, if I'm only measuring, say, students from or kids or people from zero to, say, 18 years old, if I try to predict based on this data what's happening outside, maybe at 50, if I'm following this trend, I should be guessing that someone that's 50 years old is going to be super tall based on this trend. However, my common sense tells me that outside of this data, this trend may not continue. Right? We may not continue to go in an increase in height exponentially or continuously as we grow older. Eventually we may hit a point where we start to drop off and our height starts to decrease. I mean, but based on the scatter plot that I have from 0 to 18 years old, I don't know that. So again, that's why we're predicting when we're talking about outside um, or extrapolating beyond the values that we know. It's a prediction because we're not sure if the trend is going to continue beyond the data we've collected. Interpolation, again, going back to it, it's an estimate because we're fairly confident that we know what the trend is like within the data we've collected. The next thing we're going to look at is how to create a scatter plot and then find the trend line of best fit. So in this example, we're going to be looking at this situation or this scenario. In this scenario is that the local ice cream shop keeps track of how much ice cream they sell versus the noon temperature on that day. And here are their figures for the last 12 days. So we have our table of ice cream sales versus temperature. We have our two columns with all of our data for the 12 days. So the following steps on the next page are basically going to be how you create a scatter plot. And we're going to focus more on the technological side rather than just pen and paper. So the first step, we need to decide which variable is dependent and which one is independent. Again, remember the dependent variable is y and goes on the vertical axis. The independent variable is x and should go on the horizontal axis. So based on our scenario, the amount of ice cream they sell depends on the temperature. So again, this is going back to that dependency statement. You can think about which one affects or depends on the other. And then, so therefore, the amount of ice cream they sell is dependent. So that's our y value. Temperature is independent and should be the x value. Given the table that we have, it's helpful because usually the first column is always the x, col or x values. Not always, um, depending on who's created the table of values, but generally speaking, that first column should always be your x. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to Desmos to use our graphing calculator. It's probably the most straightforward, simplest one, so we're going to use that to graph it. So you can use, or you can go to desmos.com. Oh, it's already written up there. You can go to desmos.com. We should be fairly familiar with it by now, um, but if not, go to the website. The first thing that pops up in the middle should be a button that says graphing calculator, and you're going to click on that. So I'm going to switch over and we're going to look at that. So here I have basically a blank graph. Move it in back closer to what we would see. So the first step you would want to do is you want to click this plus button up in the top left corner that says add item. In this case, we are going to add a table because we're going to create our scatter plot. Based on that table now, we are going to enter in our v values from the table of values that we were given in our scenario. So X is going to be temperature, so 14.2, then $215, 
Don't worry about including any of the units, just include the values, 16.4, 325, and so on. I wouldn't change the titles either because it's gonna to need to be specific for the next step that we look at. So just make sure it's the X, uh, it's the standard whatever comes up. I've already created a table, just so you don't have to hear the clicking every time we go through it, but this is generally what it should look like. Again, you can change the color if you want. If you click and hold, you can change the color to match whatever. You can change what the points look like, but I would leave it on just color and points. Another thing, if you've tried to create multiple tables um, by accident and then you have a different number here at the bottom, here you should hopefully see that it says X1 and Y1. Make sure it says that on yours. All you have to do, I'll show you on the, oops, on the keyboard down here. All you have to do is click X and then if you hit one, it automatically puts it as a subscript or a lower number. So you don't have to worry about keyboard shortcuts, X and then one, and it'll automatically look like that. So now we have our scatter plot. However, if we look at our graph over here, we don't see our scatter plot anywhere. That's because basically the values that we have on our table are outside of our window here. So you could fiddle around with it and try to zoom out, but the nice thing about this is, click this plus button in the bottom corner with the, little mic or with the little magnifying glass, and it will automatically reshape the window so that we can see our data. So now we can see our scatter plot. Um, we can make some comments about it, about the trend, um, about the correlation, about the strength. Right? We can see that as the temperature increases, the number of sales also increases. We could argue that it's a strong correlation or a strong relationship because they are tight together that we can see kind of that straight line idea. We could say it's a positive correlation because as one increases, the other increases. So that's how we would describe this graph. The next thing we want to do now is come up with our trend line. And what we're gonna do with our trend line is we're gonna type in an equation. And this equation is on the summary note, so again, you can refer back to that. But what we're gonna do it's gonna be y1, because that's gonna match the y values on our, on our table. I'm gonna use an approximation of this little squiggly line. It's not gonna be in equals. If you're using your keyboard, you can do that as well. It should be the button next to the one. Um, so if you hold shift in that button, um, you should get this little squiggly line. This pop-up keyboard as well works. Then it's going to be m for our slope, then x, oops, x1, again matching the x1 in our table, and then plus b. So now I have a trend line or a line of best fit. So again, this is basically an approximation or um, the average of all my points, and this is the best estimation that they could have or come up with for that trend line. So it shows us on our graph, this straight line represents um, or models our scenario or, or table of values or scatter plot. And the nice thing is we can see under parameters here at the bottom, it tells us our M value and our B value. So that's the key thing because it tells us that specifically for our equation of a line. And if we remember from solving equations of lines, we want our M and our B value. We wanna know our slope and our Y intercept. So this is how you can use Desmos to come up with those, um, with those two values. Create a table of values, plot it, a little magnifying glass to view everything. Type in this general form here, Y1, um, squiggly line M X one plus B it will create your line of best fit and it'll come up with your values for your M and B at the bottom here so those are the steps to creating um, scatter plot in the trend line we're gonna go back to the note just to kind of summarize what we found with that trend line 
So looking at this trend line, taking the values, this is the equation of a line that we should get. And from that, we can kind of make some notes about this scenario. The slope, we are talking about um, ice cream sales compared to temperature. So our slope would tell us that it's about $30.12 or $30.12 earned per degree change, right? Or for every step, we're increasing by 30.12. The y-intercept, in this case, our y-intercept is negative. Right? So if we think about this in the context of the problem, we can look at things like the cost of buying the ice cream. So putting it all together, we could say the shop makes $30.12 per degree in temperature, but needs to spend $159.58 for product and wages. So basically, that's how much they owe or how much they need to make before they can break even or make $0. So again, just a quick summary of how to come up with a table of values for uh, on Desmos and how to come up with your trend line of best fit. Um, make sure you print off this note or download it so you have a copy um, and can reference these steps if you ever have to go back to it. Mm -hmm.